If you could choose a superpower, what would it be? Would you have super strength and flight like Superman or incredible intelligence like Iron Man? But being a mind reader would make for an amazing superhero. That's an impossible dream, right? Maybe not. What if you could read body language? With a little practice, you could become a superhero. Or villain. We know you twisted weirdos are out there. Take a look at BBC's Sherlock, for example. Ready to get your superpowers? Here are 10 things body language says about you. Of course, all the best superheroes need super content to keep them on top of their game. So hit that subscribe button and join our team of crime-fighting super nerds. I mean, heroes. Smiley face. There are few things in this world that are more beautiful than a genuine smile. It can light up the face and make a person more beautiful. A smile is universal. Little babies will respond to a smile even though they cannot speak. Smiling is also a natural response to positive emotions. This is proven by the fact that blind people can smile even though they've never seen a smile in their life. However, smiles can be faked. But how do you know if a smile is genuine? Remember what I said about smiles being a natural response? This means that we all smile in the same way. When we smile, our eye muscles are engaged. We can't help it. Our eyes lift and our face becomes a little softer, adding to the beauty of your smile. If a person smiles, but it doesn't quite reach their eyes, they are faking it. Another way to tell is if a person grins for about five minutes while only using their lips. People fake a smile for a lot of different reasons. They could be stressed or uncomfortable and backing away. So if you're planning to fake a smile, then use your eyes and don't hold it for too long. This might make others uncomfortable and less likely to trust you. Or you'll look downright creepy and will get used to panicked expressions and people backing away from you. The brush and blink. The top half of the face is a gold mine when it comes to body language. You say a lot with your eyes. They are the windows to the soul after all. A quick survey of this area can tell you a lot about how a person is feeling at that particular moment. If a woman is brushing her hair back, then it could mean any number of things. It could mean that they are nervous and are looking for a way to keep their hands busy, or it could also be flirty. Swiping the hair away from the face is a way to call attention to feminine assets. Face and neck, people. I don't even want to know where your minds went. Not sure which is which? Look at the eyes. An average person blinks about six to eight times a minute. If you blink more, then you should probably get that checked out. If you're losing your cool, you will blink more rapidly and dramatically. If a woman is flirting, she won't blink like a spastic robot. She will maintain steady eye contact, unless she flirts like a spastic robot. The same principle applies to men. Nervous equals blinky. So if you're going into an important meeting or just want to exude confidence because you're cool like that, don't overblink and just leave your hair alone. Lips don't lie. Moving on to the lower half of the face. You could find out whatever you need by catching a glance of what's happening by the mouth or nose. This will also be a little less creepy than staring into the eyes and counting how many times they blink. If a person bites, licks, or sucks on their lips, it is because they are trying to calm themselves down. They might be nervous or upset. Either way, this is not a good sign. Don't read too much into this as their lips might just be dry or they're just a little odd. Don't give up. I'm sure they're enjoying your company. Want to know if they're lying? Keep an eye on the nose. When you lie, you receive a rush of adrenaline, which causes the veins in the nose to expand a little, causing your nose to itch. If a person scratches their nose a little more than might be coincidental, you might be talking to a liar. So, if you're lying, don't scratch. It's a lie. Irony? Nope, never heard of it. The same goes for twitchy nose syndrome. If they're twitching their nose like a nervous little bunny, they're lying. You can also tell if they're staring a little too intensely. A liar will try and avoid looking shifty by overcompensating in the way they look at you. Closed off. Our brains are amazing at keeping us alive, but they do more than that. They also work tirelessly to keep us happy. When we see something upsetting, our brains will try and close the blinders, so to speak. If you're closing your eyes for longer than a blink and more frequently, then you're experiencing something you don't like. Our brains will try and end things by shutting our eyes more than is normal. If you find yourself or another person doing this, Leave the scene, if at all possible. People don't typically react well to things they don't want to see. Speaking of not-so-awesome scenarios, if someone lowers their gaze, it's a cry for help. It's an unconscious plea for a little support and is common among little kids. The action will elicit a parental response and will cause you to soften. If you're dead inside, then proceed with caution. This person is not happy and will require careful handling. 
If, like me, you're not very good at picking up on this, you'll experience something called pursed lips. This cannot be effectively faked by most people and is a clear warning sign of anger. Do not mess with this person. Back away slowly. If it's too late, just cover your head. Heads up! Want to be a good friend? Okay, want to fake being a good friend? We've all been there. Your friend needs a little help and so, of course, they come to your shoulder for a good cry. No doubt you want to be a bad friend, so tilt your head to the side. There, now your friend knows you're listening and you can hear through the uncontrollable sobbing a little better. On the other side of the spectrum, you're minding your own business in the office when chatty Kathy suddenly realizes she hasn't told you about her holiday in Bora Bora. Trapped and in for one long ride, try and refrain from nodding. When a person nods, the other person registers the gesture as a sign of interest. You obviously don't want that to happen, so try and limit the nodding to about once during the conversation. You wouldn't want to be rude. Finally, free from chatty Kathy's clutches, you see the office hunk from across the room. Suddenly you remember you haven't told them about your trip to Disneyland yet. They raise one or more eyebrow, keep going, they're interested. If they lower their eyebrows, it means you're becoming chatty Kathy. Either way, lowered or raised are better than an impassive face, which means they are just truly apathetic about you meeting Goofy for the sixth time. What is your stance? The way you hold yourself is crucial in social interactions. Standing with your legs together means you're deferential and conservative by nature, or you're in the army. Standing with your legs apart and your hands on your hips is a sign of determination. This signals strength, that you will not back down and that you will fight for your rights. The last pizza slice is yours. That or you have just won the Hunger Games. Team Gale! For more socially acceptable stances, keep in mind that you angle yourself towards the person who has your focus. Look down at your feet. Look down at your feet. The person they're facing is the person who you are interested in. By simply angling yourself toward a person and coming to attention will indicate respect. Keep this in mind when talking to the boss. If you're talking to a person and someone else joins, you can angle yourself slightly toward them to show their welcome. If they aren't, then don't change your angle. They will pick up on this fairly quickly. Don't turn your back on them, this is considered rude. Incidentally, you will also find yourself leaning away from this person if you don't like them. If you do, you will lean toward them. If you're on a date, the same rules apply. If they lean away, you could always adopt a couple of cats. Walk the walk, sit the sit. Being in an unfamiliar situation can be extremely terrifying. The only way to combat this feeling is by taking charge of the situation. Project confidence and this will go a long way in making you a little more familiar with what is going on. Of course, of course, this is a little easier said than done. First of all, stop trying to make yourself seem smaller. Don't hunch your shoulders or fold your arms. Funny enough, standing with your arms folded doesn't always mean you're angry. Unless your legs are crossed, then it might just mean you're comfortable standing that way. If a person's legs are crossed, abort mission. Back to making yourself small, don't. If you're sitting, then spread out a little more. The more space you take up, the more comfortable you seem. If you're in a boardroom, then you could try spreading your papers out. This makes it seem like you have things under control. Keep in mind that there is a fine line between confidence and invading people's space. They like confidence, but they enjoy their space more. While walking, you could walk a little faster. This will make it seem like you're extremely busy with important business and not hoping it's home time yet. You should also ditch the deer in the headlights expression right about now. If you add a little bounce in your step, people will assume you have an upbeat and bubbly personality. No need to crush their dreams right away. Hands-on approach. Do you gesture a lot? That doesn't mean you're out of control. Okay, maybe just a little. It usually means that you're an energetic person. Research shows that a person who gestures a lot while speaking usually means that they are agreeable and warm. Look at you being all warm and agreeable. Now, spread your hands out as if serving something from a tray. This means that you are open to the idea that is being discussed. Speaking to a complete moron, face your palms down or clench your fists. This means that they aren't getting anywhere and should probably stop. If you tend to gesture less, this usually means that you are more analytical. Either way, try and keep the number of gestures balanced. Too many gestures and you become frantic and over the top. If you're afraid of doing this, then try and hold on to something during a job interview. Too little and you seem cold and boring. Either way, there is nothing wrong with too many or too little gestures. You should also stop picking at your nails. This is a sign of nerves. Steeple your fingers to seem more self-assured. This 
like this, or make yourself look like a Disney villain. <laughs> Footloose. Even if your stance is confident, you could be betrayed by your feet. Think of them as the Benedict Arnolds of your body. Your body might be saying, at large and in charge. But if your feet are angled inward, this will portray you as feeling nervous or awkward. If your feet are faced straight ahead, but you're fidgeting in any way, this is a sign of nerves, since a bouncing leg usually relieves tension. Ironically, this increases tension since you're feeling, well, tense. It's a vicious cycle that you don't want to get caught in. Fidgeting is a sign that your body is getting ready to hightail it out of there. Calm down, Usain. Just try crossing your ankles. This will not only look professional, but will also calm those flighty traitors while you try and keep your cool. If you're feeling calm, but look down and notice the person you're talking to has their feet angled toward the door, it is because they are ready to sprint on out of there. Cut the conversation and smile pleasantly. Leaving first might salvage some of your street cred. In a group setting, it is usually pretty easy to spot the person who is at the center of attention, but if you want to know what people are really feeling, try looking down at their legs. If their legs are crossed, their toes will be pointed at the person they are most interested in. Personality Test They say that dogs and children are the best judge of character. Unfortunately, most of us don't take a dog or child everywhere, so it is up to us to find out what type of person we're hanging with. If a person is talking quickly and uses a lot of choppy hand gestures, it can be a pretty sure sign of impatience. This would not be the time to talk about your stamp collection. If the person you're with is slouching, it can mean that they are overwhelmed. This might be because of your stunning personality or you took out the stamp collection too soon. The person to talk to about your stamp collection would be someone who touches their heart unconsciously or gestures with their palms up. This means that you are talking to a compassionate person. You can test this by saying something that requires the person to say, I'm sorry. If the person uses one of these gestures, you found an empathetic person. If not, you have found a fellow ice queen. A person's body will tell you an awful lot about what type of person they are, so don't ignore the small gestures. The devil is in the details. If you are vigilant and manage to pick up the right signals in time, you can judge whether or not you will get along with this person in a minute or two. Talk about superpower. We can't all be superheroes, but we can make our lives better by knowing how to speak in body language. With a little body language, we can fake it till we make it. And that's our real superpower. Don't forget to subscribe and check out more of our wacky superpowered content here at The Wacky.